Right, Subaru Forester, 2001 model, the EJ20 engine in it, and I want to take off the idle air control valve, which is there, and give it a wee clean and to see if it is actually working. How do you know when they go faulty? Well, what the symptoms of when it's not working right generally is when you maybe come up to a road junction or something or whatever and you slow right down to stop the car starts hunting up and down in speed or may even stall but it usually starts up against it anyway and then it sorts itself out so it's just a valve that should move in and out and control that situation it just gets gummed up I've already given this a clean so I know it's quite clean but I just actually never really tested it out to see if it actually was working but I'm, I assumed it was because I didn't have that problem in the first place I was only just cleaning it however I shall show the procedure right so the first job is to remove this wire you should push in inside the clip and then pull it off then you have two Phillips screws one there and one there Try not to round them off. It's got a slot for a flat head too if you want. So yeah, I'm gonna put the camera down in case I drop the screws. Okay, both screws are out. Now it's just a case of gently wriggling it out because it's got a O-ring on it, which you see there. A red one. This is clean. So in theory, this should pop in and out when it needs to. So I'm going to connect it back up to the connector. Somebody turn the ignition on and off. Right, I've reconnected the wiring and I'm going to I'm going to turn the ignition on I expect this to move in and out. And I'm going to keep my finger on the end of it because they have been known to shoot straight out and that's great. <laughs> You've lost the bits. That's your idle control valve ruined. And well, how much does it cost? I don't know, 50, 60 pounds probably more. So you don't really want to do that if it's working. You just need to clean and put it back together. Okay, turn it on. Just lightly. All right. Turn it off. Off. On. Off. On. Okay. Turn it on again. All right, turn it off. Fine. Thanks. That's it. Is that ignition off? Ignition is off now. Yep. Thanks. Cheers. <laughs> well, that showed it working. It goes in and out. But if I hadn't kept my finger on the end, I think it would have fired it right out. So, now we can deduce from that we test that the ear idle control valve does work. And works quite nicely, which I was pretty sure it did anyway, but I just wanted to demonstrate the procedure. Right, I can feel, I'm going to clean this, and I can feel one hole that goes down that way, and one hole that goes straight in that way. So, and clean it with some. Right, so I'm going to give it a squish in there. Then give it a wee poke them out. Obviously, that's straight in, must be where that piston comes to rest. I suppose that's the one you want to be clean. Ah, yes. It 
has got a bit of cash on it. Quite a bit. I'm going to get some kitchen roll. So obviously we want the surface that this piston goes in and seals into there at least. I want that to be clean, otherwise it's not going to seal. And if it's not going to seal, and I presume air gets past it, then there you get your poor idling. Or, in my previous video this was so black, you question whether it was moving at all. In which case you would have the stuck position, and then every time you come to a junction it would just conk out. So, I'm going to poke this in here. Give it a twist around. See what we can produce. Yeah, it's not bad. Give it another squish. Well, I think that's it clean as I can get it without taking the whole throttle body off which is probably a bit of overkill unless you've got some serious issues. Now when you start it up it because of all that carb cleaner it, it can make a lot of smoke it can struggle to start but if it does struggle to start you just put the foot right to the floor and hold it there and it will eventually kick into life. Now I know this is the part number for this one on this particular model which is A33-661RO2 and there is various models for the Forester so this is the one for the 2001 model for my one Anyway, yours should have some kind of identification on it too So, if you're going to buy a new one, buy the right one I've given that a good spray down in there too. Can't see any more dirt in there. Hopefully that's it. So putting it back in, it's just the reverse for taking it out. Just remember the blue label in my one goes to the top and we'll make sure that O-ring is still in place and wriggle it in gently. He says, this won't go in. And there we go. It's quite a tight fit, once it's in. Presumably, it would need to be. And put your two screws back in. This should be better done with two hands. So I'm going to do it with two hands because I don't want to lose it. So that's the screws back on and tightened in, and then push it back on your. Yeah. Connector, which I could have been a bit more generous with the amount of cable, push it till it clicks, and that's it. Right, should start quite easy, isn't it? Yeah, we'll call it a success. <laughs>